was actually another, at least one other reference to our Sabbath school lesson this morning. Did you catch it? Verse 5. Speaks of someone in particular. It says, I'll tell you, because you don't know, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, one God forevermore. We're talking this morning we're going to have so much to share that we need to jump right into it. So we're so thankful. So we're so thankful that each of you are here this morning to join us for a special Sabbath. This is our annual education conference, and so we have a special program for you um, this morning. And our family from the education conference is going to be sharing with you some of the things about the Holy Ghost, about the point of the Holy Ghost, and about the teachings of the Holy Ghost, how they all tie together. Nature is God's second book. The book that He wants to show us wants to do something. And so we're going to go ahead and pray now and invite the Holy Spirit to be the Holy Oh, before we pray, I just wanted to give you this little story. I was speaking to a young boy. Others were standing up. And I asked him, I said, so what did you uh, like about the education? And he was like, say something. So I said, well, what did you like? And he could have said, uh, and he could just walk around. He just came to walk. He kept walking to stay down. And he said, no, what would it mean? What would it mean? He just came down. Oh, he came. Oh, that's three for sure. Oh, three for sure. Oh, three for sure. Well, what would you do if a bird came? I'll just scratch it. Have you ever seen a hurricane before? No. I think it's a hurricane. I what a hurricane looks like and what it does. Right? And so, um, Oh, I don't know what you are. You are. You Mighty wind! We saw the hurricane! And I'm praying that we see it. And you're going to hear, I tell you, I am the one who is 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 and the fire comes out. And then it touches hearts. The words that we say and the testimony that we give touches hearts in ways that nothing else can do it. Not even just our words with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we to make us So that's it. We invite you into this time, this place that is going to be your life. And we invite you into the time that is going to be your life. words that are here today that we can do. And that each person will take away something and do it so that we can do it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 
Um, we're talking about third and fifth week. We're the best thing and darkness and death. The water represents the light, fire, and fire. What do you see? Is it here? Okay, so it's still a record of the So I heard a story on I saw James Miller for Claire Toy. It talks about um, People asking what could they do to be saved. Peter says to them, Because he had purity of heart, could be used for the Holy Spirit, which the girls are holding up. You're holding up your, your Holy Spirit? Hold up your Holy Spirit. To teach the people today, if we want to do a powerful witness, we must have pure hearts and clean minds. The message will be 
other thing is so it can turn from spots, from stripes to spots. And I have two girls, and they're very different, and I'm trying to find out how to educate them. But the octopus has tentacles, like you can see here, and it sticks to everything. It is, it, it can appear to be anything but what it really is. And so it is with our children that if we let them roam and do whatever, they will appear to be like anything that they are attached to. But if we attach them to anything, then they will be as well as Thank you, everyone. All right, so we're going to turn it over to the next group. Thank you, Drew, for sharing. This is one type of fish that we study. It's called the angler fish. Before we go on to that introduce you to this a lot of people. Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Loretta Pontefract, and this is my daughter. And my son. Do you know us? I mean, it's beautiful. Hey, love. Hey, So, Lori here is also never the piece of magic, too. When he, Lori, drew this beautiful. So, Lori, you were doing what this is doing. I'm going to see this big light in the front. Three. I still see this dark. This. This. You can only see the light. It's only when you get very close to this push. You can see the light. All right, but. Even though I've done it, it's hard to 
And on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came upon all the disciples of the day, we started to speak. And, um, well, so we used to use the Holy Spirit to write the Holy Spirit. Anybody else speak a different language? So, you know, you just speak to me. So, like, I would be speaking here in my language, and then y'all would be here in your own language, right? But that's the mouth. The mouth, the mouth can give us a gift. But these disciples were praying 10 days before. They were praying 10 days before. They were cleansing. They were purifying themselves before the Holy Spirit came upon them. And they started to speak in tongues. And we have to be careful with our words, the way we speak, because we could either show purity or we could show purity by the words that we speak as well. So, um, there was one thing that we forgot to say too. Daddy, can you open that up to me, please? We forgot to mention this, this picture here. You know, the love that we have in our life, the Bible says in Psalm 19, 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and light unto my heart. If we have God's word in our heart, we can be pure, we can be clean, we can be clean. Without God's word, we can be And then when Satan comes with his little light of God, he has said, Here, this is this, 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 and he calls us. We're going to fall for because his distractions. He knows with distractions are the ones that we will be attracted to for each one of us. And it was key for us to know that, to not fall for that. And the only way we could not fall for it is to know it will, to know what's in there, to not fall free. Just like Lori said. So much such that this is impossible to start this time to see the day. Thank you, thank you. As you can see, well, I guess we should introduce the first person. So I'm Pedro, and this is my family, Aaron, uh, Daniel, which is right over here, and then Anna, and um, uh, the other mother. Hi, I'm Irene. This is Anna. This I'm so I'm so So, as you can see, we have a lot of children So, when we get together, we'll figure out how you do this. So, we get everyone to participate in the FIT. So, what we did is we had each child grab something from the table and put it Look through it and give us ideas of what they thought the lesson meant to them. And 
these are these are the each presented ideas and the that talks about the that we're going to present. And the Holy Spirit led because there was at least two individuals points that I had a dog that I wanted to present in the whale. So I said, okay, that's that's one point that's pretty great that we can use. And then um, someone said, well, I want to present a little bit about I'm like, okay, well, let's see how can we put that in to whale. And so you'll see that we we put the title in, then we put the Bible lesson, the rest of quality, and also the teacher. Um, so I'm going to let my daughter do that first, and then we'll go to the next one. But yeah, I'm going to get to the next one. And some of them have to be trying to get that creative translate. They built into different things with animals that they put in the book. So dude, this week we've been learning about the ocean and nectar. So what are nectar? So nectar are animals that constantly swim, such as a dolphin, shark, stingrays, and um, turtles. So um, if a, a crab, it cleans the bottom of the ocean, um, and so. The verse about purity, Matthew 5 8, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see that. And the definition of purity is cleanliness, freedom from foulness or dirt, as the purity of a garment. Myself and another young person shows well to so you show a picture of the world. So, uh, I've been drawing a long time for no judgment. <laughs> so, we chose well because um, I noticed that they have a hole in the top of their body, which every 30 minutes they have to repurpose to get them there. And I thought about it, and I'm like, Lord, without prayer, without studying the Bible, we need to And we can learn a lot from the wells because, too, as it were, there are certain sea creatures that they use to let them come into their mouth with food. And how it is with our bodies, we are the temple of God. So whatever we put in our bodies, it has to be able to glorify Him. And if it does not, then we are, as we were, with filthy and dirty. So, I'm going to now pass it on to the party. Some fun facts about whales. Did you know that the whale weighs as much as 50 tons? That means uh, 50 elephants is equivalent to one whole whale in weight. They also dive as deep as 3,000 feet, and they can never sleep because they always have to come up. As a whale came to a teeth on the ass. So in China, they talk about him. When you're looking for three points of it, and three minutes after the team, also three minutes every time. In my time, I was we can plot early morning or before the At each time, two minutes. So why are you cleaning your teeth? You're not, you're not just to clean the outside. Also, the chewing side. Also, inside, and there is a tongue. All need a tongue. And the big hand of the tongue, the end of the tongue, and the And the one you brush your teeth, all the time, the tongue. So, a dog suggests every 24 hours, it will go to a warrior planet. So, 
Because as you can see, there's different ideas, but we try to try it as best as possible. And um, one final thing is, I think we all learn that purity is something that God can do. It's something that we need to do for each day. Pure minds, pure thoughts, that can build character and benefits for what we do for us. So, um, thank you guys, and hopefully you enjoyed it. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Jesse. So we're going to sing the song Create in the Extreme Park. The octopus is another next time. We know it has eight arms or eight tentacles. The octopus eats plants, crabs, lobsters, and all sorts of other things. Sometimes it injects poison into prey. By eating the pure foods of our entire health. I'm seeing impurity in our diet. We can enjoy good health and find out what's going to offer us. We want to. I think there's a couple of awards and we want to bring spirit to the world with the first three to the sixth and the fifth.
case of our nature lesson, we talked about actions. We um, trying to tie everything together with the other groups of things. Between the Bible lesson together with character quality, with um, lessons in nature. And so, let me ask you if you open your Bible. We're looking at several Bible verses in regards to our character quality on purity. There's different uh, synonyms for purity through the Bible. And I've chosen specific verses to help us to demonstrate what God requires, what He desires for us. He desires to us to be pure. So if you um, have your Bible, it's Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. Be a little interactive, so if you get there, if you would read it, it's the first one for many of us are familiar with. Um, Revelation 3 21, there is a um, very specific word I'm looking for in this verse. And if you will, So to him that overcomes, okay, so each, each verse is going to have a special word. The first letter of that word is going to spell one of the animals that can be studied about uh, in the nature So overcome begins with the letter. Okay. Overcoming, is that part of being living a pure life? Yes, to him that overcomes. We are to overcome as Christ overcomes. Is Christ pure? Yes, we have a pure life. He wants us to live a pure life as well, so there's an aspect in our life of overcoming, which is a daily work in our life. Amen. So, our next verse is Psalm 51 10. We have a thing that's been about it. Psalm 51 10. You can take something up and read it. Okay. You know, okay. Psalm 51 10. Go ahead, man. Okay. 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 Mine, mine is a little different. Uh, mine reads, read in me a clean heart. So, clean. And as one of the groups mentioned earlier, uh, the word for pure is clean. Well, but what does God want us to have clean? Our hearts need to be made clean. So, the next word right here is the letter. Please forget the O and A. Here we go. Uh, John 14, verse 6. Many of you know this Bible verse. John 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man So I am the way, the truth. Do we need truth in order to be clean and pure? Because there's many lies out there in this world that will keep us impure, that will keep us dirty or filthy. The things of this world are impure. But Jesus says that He is the truth. We need the truth. So we have an O, a C, and a Romans six sixteen. Romans six sixteen. A very special word in here. It's mentioned a couple times. Two times to be specific. Meaning a variation from the third time. Romans six sixteen. Who would like to be that? What was that stuff to work then? Let no you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to Is obedience required in order for us to be pure? 
Yes, Jesus lived a perfect life of obedience. And in living that obedient life, he demonstrated his life. And so, the next letter is, oh, 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 oh. Psalm 119, verse 140. So, I don't want us just to come across as, okay, we know, we know we need to be pure, we know we need to overcome, we know that we need to obey. Those kind of statements are a little big. So that could be your version or my version. It could be different, right? So how do we overcome? How do we obey? What, what are we to apply? Let's make it applicable. Psalm 119, verse 140. So God's word is very pure. Uh, do we love God's word? So when we are called to obey, what are we being called to obey? David said here, servant. Didn't we read in Romans 6.16 that like we yield ourselves servants to obey? So what is God calling us to obey? What is it we need to overcome? Following and serving. Does that make sense? Yes, because I want to do things my own way. How about you? And naturally, that's what I want to do. But in following Christ, Jesus said we're to take up our cross how often? Daily in following Him. So if there is an implication here. God's word is very pure. We are called to love it, to have a. You now, if we're going to love God's word, don't we need to get to know God's word? In getting to know God's word, we're getting to know the word that made us. We're getting to know God's word. So, the, the next letter there is P. O. 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 Two more, two more verses. Uh, 2 Corinthians 6 17. 2 Corinthians 6 17. I'll read this one. It says, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will see you. You want to be received by Jesus? Does He require us to stop touching certain things? To stay away from sin? Yes. That's, that's part of the cross that we're to bear. Though the sin may tempt us, Jesus calls for us to be separate. To turn away from it. And He says, in doing so, uh, that's the part that we are to participate in. Jesus, the Bible is very clear, by grace we are saved from faith to God ourselves. However, when the sin comes our way, the enemy still wants our souls, doesn't it? What happens when the enemy comes up as a flood to his snare? We set up the standard, we follow Jesus Christ. So we have a you there, and one last one, John 17, 17. Who knows it by memory? Go ahead, say it. Amen. He spoke those words. Jesus. So, it's sanctifying being part of being pure. Sanctifying set apart for a holy purpose. So, all of the letters put together. What, what animal are we studying about? You know, somewhere in this congregation, there is an animal. But the children like to come in. And I, I, this is part of our lesson because, when the children, if you want to go, Somewhere. Now, Jesus said, the wind blows where it wishes. And you can't hear the sound of it. What did he compare the wind to? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. You know, the octopus, as the other group mentioned, is that uh, it, it has a very well way of camouflaging itself. If you were swimming in the ocean, do you think it would be very easy for you to find the octopus? No. The octopus goes where it wishes. Uh, what's interesting, we, we studied about the, the arms of the octopus. And the octopus, they have discovered that how many arms do they have? Eight. Did you know that each arm has a mind of its own? Did you find the octopus? Oh, great, great. So even though it was in the midst of us, maybe you all didn't know, it's not to advertise 
an octopus that's the size of a man's fist. They get larger, as somebody already mentioned earlier, 28 feet in length. Pretty large, isn't it? Um, the octopus, each arm has a mind of its own. So while two of its arms could be used for eating, even though the other six can do all of the things that they can do, you know, typically when I'm using my arms, it's very difficult. Have you ever tried patting your head and rubbing your head at the same time? Not very easy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it can be difficult. But the octopus, you know, it's our lesson we're studying about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit, um, when the Holy Spirit comes into our life and we're transformed, what, what, what would we call it? It's not the an old life, but it's the new life. It's a new beginning, isn't it? You know, uh, as we mentioned, the number eight, the octopus has eight legs, correct? That eight in the Bible also symbolizes new beginnings. New beginnings. Um, a couple of Bible examples of something. In the book of Acts, I don't know the Bible. In um, the book of Acts, in chapter 9 of the book of Acts, there was a man in there by the name Aeneas. Remember the man Aeneas? He was only mentioned at one time. In Acts chapter 9, verses 33 and 34, it says, and then he found a certain man named Aeneas. Peter found Aeneas. And had kept his bed for eight years and was sick of the palsy. So here Aeneas was sick for eight years. Peter came, and what do you think Peter did with Aeneas? Healed him. Aeneas had a new beginning. He had a new life. Uh, I think of the example of Jesus after he resurrected. He appeared to some people. But when he appeared to his disciples in that upper room, there was a man missing. Do you remember his name? Thomas. Very good name. Thomas was missing. Now, the other disciples, they had begun their new beginning with Jesus. Because they saw him, they were believing in him. But Thomas, was Thomas believing? No, he was doubting. After Jesus appeared to the disciples in the upper room, do you remember how many days later it was he appeared with the of the Bible says Eight days later he appeared with the Thomas of the He appeared to Thomas and he said, Thomas, you can tell me, He said to Jesus, my Lord and my God, he said, can you believe now because you see me? Blessed are they that believe and And so, in many different ways. There's one last thing I'd like to mention. I'd like you to share with me something different about the octopus that um, is kind of unique from other animals. But what else can the octopus do? Other than having to take arms and swimming, what does it do to me? Swimming. What, what comes out of the octopus's body? Good. Very good. I'd like to close in one last Bible verse, if you will. Uh, if you will go with me to 2 Corinthians Not that many of us are going to see octopus in real life. We're going to go to the ocean, to scuba diving, and we're going to see one because it's camouflage. But that ink, that ink is to teach us a very spiritual lesson. A spiritual lesson. In 2 Corinthians 3, Verses 2 and 3, the Bible says, Ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by us. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in flesh and tables of the heart. And such trust we have to forgive the God. So just as the octopus that uses ink to hide itself, um, God says we're not to be written with ink. Now, our Bibles are written with ink. 
We have our Bible. We read our Bible. We're to believe our Bible. We're to love what's written in the Bible. But how many people in the world are actually reading the Bible? It seems too many. But how many people are reading you? Everybody. Everybody is reading you. And if you in turn are following what is written in the Bible, and people see that in you, so let us not be as written with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. We saw last in this week about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, new beginning, and we're to have that new beginning of life. Look out, bless you all. We hope that you will accept that blessing by the Holy Spirit. Yes, all the children, please come up for a moment. Mr. Carissa is calling for a moment. Come on, get her close. Okay. Come on. Can you get my phone? Looking at the future of the church, our young people. And I uh, just had an opportunity to go to Serbia and Romania, especially in Serbia. Um, it was at a Adventist theology school there. And they wanted to know about Adventist education history. And a couple of articles that I read. By PhDs and you know, people with masters and so forth, they're telling us that the survey that they've done, that 50 to 60 percent of our young people are leaving. More than that. <laughs> and they're wondering why and what do we do? What do we do about it? And if you look at our history, the book Education by Ellen White. She was inspired by God to write that book. It came out in 1903. Where is that book gone? Is it in schools? Are our teachers, are our parents reading that book? See, we've departed from the true education, God's system of education. And God's calling us back. And for us to have, how many of you children want to a fire? You need to understand it completely. How many adults here want tons of fire? What you're saying is that you want the fullness of the Holy Spirit to come in. But what's He going to do when He comes in? How many of us pray for the Holy Spirit? Everybody out there. Anybody pray for the Holy Spirit? What's He going to do when He comes in? He's got a lot of things to do, but. What are we to do in order to be prepared for him to come in? Study. And it sounds like to me that we've had students that have been studying this week, the last few days. And that's what all of us are being called to do, is to study during the week and come. And you want to make Sabbath a delight? The holy of the Lord? It's I'm so thrilled. We had for our morning worships and our evening worships, we had families do that and show us what they're doing in their homes. That's how to transform a church. That's how to transform a family. And that's how to transform a nation. It starts when we talk about the church. The church is made up of families. And if we don't help restore the family, we're going to lose our children. Because parents, if you just let the Sabbath school teacher or the school teachers 
convert your children or educate them in religious things, you're going to lose. We have so many parents that come up to me and say, oh, I sent my children to church school. It's, I'm not trying to down church schools, but just like a church, let's take the name off of the church if we're not following and so, children, I need let's see. I'm going to give you something. And I want you to look at it. Have you ever read something that was really nice? What did it do to your tongue? I'm going to give all of you this. I'm going to give all of you this. Yes. Well, this is what we're going to do for us today. So, what do you have in your name? Fire. Fire. And is God, is he like fire? And the Bible says that he's a consuming fire. Does God want to consume you? He wants to consume this sin in your life. He wants to burn it off. Do you want to give it to him? So, all of those who have the fire, could you come and put it on the backboard? Put it where the Bible lesson told us it was. Is the fire at your feet? Is it up in the air? Where is the fire supposed to be? And then come back and get it with the rest of the group. So we can all see what that fire is. What? Where is the fire? Can you all put point on your... Oh, this is where the fire is. Look, what's up here? What did we study this week with up here? You know, what's inside? What's inside? The brain. So what do we do with the brain? We think. And the words that we hear and read and the pictures we see, where does, where does all that go? Into your brain. And the brain is the organ, but what is it called when uh, we're thinking? What do you call this? You, you think it's the mind. The mind is what thinks. And the Bible calls it the heart. Where's your heart? Do you know what Jesus has as the high priest in heaven on his heart? Do you know what the priest, the high priest down here in the sanctuary experience had on his heart? Do you know what he's doing? The breastplate. The breastplate, and there were stones on it. Those stones that, what did those stones represent? All the tribes of Israel. Do you belong to a tribe? So what does Jesus hold in his trust? In his heart? And so, when you see the sign of him, what does Jesus want to be seen in your mind? To, what does fire do? It burns, and the fuel in it is what you put in it to make it wood. And wood represents humanity, and that's what makes the dawn. Your selfishness. That's what makes your heart dirty. And I have something ready in that gold box behind you. Could you bring it in? Bring the whole back. Now, Wednesday night, what did I have in mind? Well, I had something else. Was it? Oh, dirty water, clear water. And yeah, what was in the small jar? It was the clean water. What was in the tall jar? Dirty water. I have my tall jar in here. What do you think it looks like? Clean? You're right. You're right. Do you want to drink some? Yeah. I know people 
people that put dirty water in the glass, and even if you can wash it and make it clean, but you throw the glass in. But I washed it, and I put even hydrogen peroxide in it, which is like bleach, to clean it, to purify the glass. And everything so that when I put pure water in it, it's drinkable. You have to be a part of it. That's what God wants to do in your heart, your mind, your affections, what you love. And if Jesus and his mom and dad, they learn something that you're doing or they're doing that's dirty, they want to So you don't have to get rid of it. The first thing, we're going to all do it. To do is we're going to need And just saying, I'm going to ask you to And it's so important to know what God wants to do. He wants to hear that we have dirty hearts and we know it. And Please promise to give us a clean heart. What do we have to do? What was your memory verse? What do we do? What did the people do? Repent. And so that's what I want you to do to do. Because we don't want anybody, not even a child, to go home with a dirty heart. You want a dirty heart? No. So we have to ask God. Son is going to pray. I want you to pray in your heart. I want you to to say that word. Dear Father, we have been praying for you. 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 We have Your seats, and then, um, oh, you know, one, one, one more thing. If you go back to your seats, let's um, try to put some. You know, I I had some conversations with the children between the family and, and sometimes, you know, we see people in the church. We may see something very kind, especially children. We may have seen it. Get to know things, especially the kind of situation. And of course, single people too. I mean, single people on the, I'll tell you, there's everybody. We need to know everybody. But right, this is specifically for people. This is complex. But everyone needs to know. I just want to open up our hearts and minds to the need of the church to be more friendly. And as you study and know God, we need to find out to move to our children. And we can see in families where there's mom and dad there, and having family worship morning and night, we can smell that they're growing in the knowledge of God. 
But if we know God and we know God's system of education, we're not going to struggle like others who don't know him, don't know his way. And so today, as we have the freedom that we have, let's get to know God and let's get to know his ways and share it. That's what the tongues of prayer is for. You to learn about him, to know him, and then let him see him. You are your words. Your words are words of encouragement and hope for those who don't know him. And we're going to be sitting here coming every week to church. I don't know how to study here. And so, just um, Father in heaven, we are so grateful that we have today. Today, to learn more about you. And I pray for each one that's here, including the children and the teens. Father, you know each one. You know um, each of our needs. And we just pray for the Holy Spirit to come. And bring that fire to please the sin. If we will let it go, you will not do it if we don't invite you in and let you take away our desires, the things that are carnal, things that are evil, things that are not of you. And especially our children, our children are just, it's invaded, it seems like. We've um, seen all around you, it's so accessible. So, thank you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. And uh, we're sure it's that you can cleanse our hearts. And we will do it. And we have a work for us to do, and a mission, and we have a purpose today. And each one of us should have a purpose and a uh, teach us what that is and what is to be done with Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen.